Happiness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. Welcome to MNS Creativers. I hope and trust I find you well. For this morning's devotional, we want to consider the hymns as they are panned by the children of God or even developed from being poems into becoming hymns as we sing the songs of Zion and look forward to the advent of our Savior, Lord, and Jesus Christ. May we sing these songs with conviction, even though we may not be gifted musically. I would recommend that you take time to flip the pages and read these hymns as poems. You will find them good for your soul. They will nourish your heart. Trust me, they will. Without much ado, why don't we spend time together in prayer? Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, dear Lord, thank you for the privilege of considering your love as it has been expressed by the hymnologists and the poets of old. May you speak to our hearts this morning. This is our prayer of faith. Revive us and charge us for the heavens to come. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen. Without much ado, we go into the hymns as promised there are some songs that I think if I had an opportunity, I would have placed them in some hymn book, but I am yet to find them in there. There is one that was done by the Volker Union a couple of years ago, but it was still in our time. It goes as follows, once upon a tree. He died at Calvary, once upon a tree. He suffered loss. Greater story told, starting with these words. No. Not with once upon a time, but once upon a tree. While the story setting is at Calvary, we ought to be alive to that. This is an old story that has been told from time immemorial. But even then, we still want more and more of it every day and every other other day. I borrow from the words of Catherine Hankey as she writes the song, Tell Me the old, old story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. Tell me the story simply as to a little child, for I am weak and weary and helpless and defiled. Please, she writes, tell me the old, old story. Once again, tell me the old, old story. I beg you, tell me the old, old story of Jesus and his love. While we are listening to this plea, Catherine changes lanes and moves over to the other side and responds to the same hymn with yet another hymn, as if to say, you did not ask, you need not plea or beg of me to tell you this story, for I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell this story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else can do. So believe me when I say I love to tell this story. It will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. This is a story that has been told by people who have been fit as a fiddle. It has been told by those who are ailing and on their deathbeds. And Eugene Butlet goes on to tell the story, having heard it once. She was, he was now on the verge of death, having succumbed to a stroke that was debilitating. As his health failed him by the day, these were his parting words. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning. Of his precious bloods are tawning. Then I repented of my sins and won that victory. As Bartlett was writing the song, the recorder says his health was so bad he could barely write anymore. He could not shape his words very well, cross the T's and dot the I's, but he writes his refrain or chorus with that triumphant tone. And this is what he says as he gets to that victory. He claims it and holds it as if by his two hands. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me 
and bought me with his redeeming blood, not with money, but with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He pledged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. We have been loved and purchased with the blood of the cross. This is a story worth hearing over and over again. Fanny Crosby, one other hymnologist, was blind from birth. And as she heard the story of Jesus, she could not be left out. She added another layer to the story of Jesus and says, you know, you need not just tell me the story of Jesus, but write on my heart every precious word. Tell me the story most precious. It is the sweetest that was ever heard. This is the precious story of Jesus Christ as recorded. It is the precious story and sweetest story of Jesus Christ as sung through the ages. And once this story is written in the heart, it can only be lived. According to the words of Mrs. E. Prentice, and she captures these very well. This is what she has to say. More love to thee, O Christ. More love to thee. Hear thou the prayer I make on bended knee. This is my earnest plea. More love, O Christ, to thee. More love to thee. More love to thee. Where you think you have had it all and you know it all, the story of Jesus becomes new all over again. We will never exhaust it just as Eliza Howitt confessed once upon a time and she writes, more about Jesus I would know. More of his grace to others, sure. More of his saving fullness, see. More of his love who died for me. There is always more of this love. When you have measured 360 degrees, you know Isaac Watts in his song, Alas, Indeed, My Savior Bleed, goes on to clarify that this is a love that is beyond degree. You cannot measure it distance, you cannot measure it diameter, you cannot measure it perimeter-wise, you can measure it, you cannot even measure it and exhaust it heat-wise. You know, when the love of many shall grow cold and the furnaces of Babylon are multiplied seven times, the love of Christ shall never lose its power. It shall never lose its efficacy, for it is the love that sees us into this earth in the bedding words. It is the love that resides with us in the homes. It is the love that we find as we fellowship in the church. It is the love that we meet as we play and work. It is the love that pursues us even into those hospital beds. On our sick beds, it never leaves us. It is the love that follows us even into the prisons when we are incarcerated. And it is the love that touches us even when the cold finger of death has touched us. Love does not forsake us. It follows us surely as goodness and mercy do follow us every day. You know, love is one thing that when all is lost, better remain behind. Another story is told of a man who was committed to a psychiatric ward. You know, he was a mental health care user. Now, as this man demised, they found on his wall, uh, written, stenciled out the poem, The Love of God. It was written a long, long time ago, designed for a Jewish festival and even developed further by Frank Lehman. Now, this particular man who remains unknown writes this song on the wall and he inscribes it. And I hope and pray if only we could engrave the love of God in our hearts, for it is a love that is beyond degree. It is a love that cannot be measured we sang how wide, how deep it is, and even how high it is. Such is the love of God. And the poem that was found even spoke to this message. And it read as follows, The love of God is greater far than tongue or man can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bow down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. A love stands at three. Could we with ink the ocean fill and wear the skies of parchment made? Were every stock on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. 
nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. May the love of God enjoy your prayers. May the love of God outlive you. May the love of God shepherd you in the paths of righteousness. Let us pray briefly. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, we love the story of Jesus Christ. It is amazing. The story that was preached on the pulpit of Calvary. And there has never been such a pulpit where we have been introduced to the champion of the world. A champion who knows only victory. And how we pray, dear Lord, that the champion of the ages may victor of our hearts. May he speak to us through this love story. Impress upon us that we need to know about Jesus more and more. And to others show how he has been merciful and gracious unto us. This marvelous grace we enjoy day by day. And dear Lord, may you write not only the Ten Commandments in our hearts, but may you write your love in our hearts. This has been our prayer of faith. Until we meet again, bless us with your peace. Amen.